the digestive system has this basic problem, which even then goes back to bacteria and their digestion. Um, when we eat molecules, they're big, all right? They're just too big, actually. So starch is too big to travel through blood or limb. Proteins are too big to be transported, et cetera. So that's a problem. We, we eat big molecules. And then secondly, these are molecules from other organisms. Where in your body do you use plant starch? You don't. Where do you use chicken proteins? You don't. Even if you want to build muscle, you use the uh, molecules of human muscle proteins, not chicken proteins or cow proteins. Um, you have human triglycerides in your adipose, not corn oil or fish oil. So that's a problem. And so what your digestive system must do is take these big molecules, often from other organisms, and then break them into um, smaller components that can be transported. But also, if you take these big molecules from other species and convert them then into their building blocks, monosaccharides, simple sugars, or amino acids, you could then reassemble um, these small building blocks in the way that you see fit, not the way that the chicken saw fit or the, um, the corn plant uh, saw fit, uh, et cetera. And so then um, some aspects of our digestive system then go back to the simplest organisms like bacteria and simple uh, eukaryotes, simply because um, what proteins make up the enzymes which tear up the molecules of your uh, diet? Well, a lot of these are then just modified versions of uh, the enzymes which are used by bacteria. Um, we know that things like cellular respiration, this goes back to, to bacteria, how um, bacteria break down foodstuffs to get ADP. Um, uh, that goes uh, back to early life. Um, oxygen uh, was introduced into the environment, and so oxygen um, uh, was used in mitochondrial respiration in all eukaryotes. Uh, uh, protists, they perform phagocytosis, and using enzymes, they rip up the things uh, which are in uh, vesicles um, to then get energy. And, and so then some of the uh, processes chemically, uh, which we use to get energy from food, these are just modifications of uh, what uh, one cell organisms uh, used. Um, sponges are the simplest animals, um, but even though they do uh, have um, digestion, um, it's relatively simple because water is coming in through openings known as ostea. Water leaves through the big central opening known as the osculum. Um, but they're essentially just filter feeding, taking um, nutrients out of the uh, water. Inside the sponge, we have these cells called choanocytes with flagella. These create a current um, that brings water in. And then if there's, say, cyanobacteria or protists in this uh, water, then they can uh, perform phagocytosis. And so um, the food of sponges then has to be limited because uh, the only stuff that they can ingest is the small one-celled organisms that can undergo phagocytosis by one single uh, cell, the choanocyte. All other animals practice extracellular digestion. So in sponges, the um, uh, the digestion is uh, the most simple. It's essentially what protists do, the phagocytosis, and then using enzymes to rip up uh, foodstuffs from there. Once we look at cnidarians, they now had a mouth and a gastrovascular cavity. And so their stinging nematocytes bring foodstuffs into this gastrovascular cavity um, so that they could then secrete their digestive enzymes into a space. So digestion in a cnidarian
is occurring outside the cells. It's occurring in this space, this gastrovascular cavity. And once the foodstuffs are broken up, they can be absorbed by the cells of the gastrodermis. So this is what happens in your stomach and your intestines. You don't take um, banana slices. You don't take you know, bits of your lunch and put them into cells. Rather, you put them into a space, whether this be the lumen of your stomach or your intestines, where enzymes digest this uh, foodstuffs, breaking it into smaller components that then can be absorbed. So this has been a feature of animals since the Cnidarians, um, this extracellular digestion, where food is then digested in a, uh, a space. Now, uh, Cnidarians have tissues, but not organs. It was in the bilaterians, the worms, that true organs evolved. And now we have a gastrointestinal uh, tract uh, with different organs. Um, different regions could be specialized. So in the earthworm, for example, the muscular pharynx helps to create you know, suction. The um, esophagus helps to, to uh, adjust the pH so that it's right for the enzymes. The crop and the gizzard grind uh, the ingested material and then chemical digestion then begins in the intestine. And so different regions of the uh, gastrointestinal tract uh, can then um, be uh, specialized. Now, um, we see that in uh, diverse uh, organisms. The temptation is to look at, say, the, you know, the crayfish and say, ah, let's call this the stomach. Let's call this the liver. Uh, the reality is, however, that the human stomach and liver, these evolved in early vertebrates. So while invertebrates may have specializations of the GI tract, um, uh, which are like, uh, which are performing a similar uh, function, they aren't true homologs of the vertebrates, say stomach or, uh, or liver, uh, etc. Now, um, one of the big uh, differences in the uh, classification of organisms, uh, of animals, is to uh, classify them as protostomes, which literally means mouth first, or deuterostomes, um, which uh, means, uh, I'm sorry, um, deuterostomes, in deuterostomes, uh, the mouth develops second and the anus uh, develops uh, first. Um, now, there are, this is a great place to uh, begin uh, the discussion of the classification of the higher animals. Um, so in a deuterostome, this first embryonic pore, the blastopore, would become uh, the anus, as opposed to in a protostome, the first embryonic pore uh, would become the uh, mouth. Now, while that is a great you know, uh, beginning to classify the higher animals as protostomes or deuterostomes. Um, and this classification is not only reflected in, you know, this organization of uh, the mouth versus uh, the anus, um, but also uh, how uh, the embryonic cells divide. Um, in deuterostomes, the heart tends to be on the, the front and the nerve cord on the back and it's hollow, while in protostomes, the nerve cord is on the front and is solid, the heart tends to be on the back. So this is a good di um, distinction. The reality is um, there is diversity in uh, deuterostomes. And so we uh, shouldn't pick any one trait. So like this poor becoming the mouth or the anus and say, this is the defining feature, simply because uh, there's variations, all right? And so even though um, uh, in deuterostomes, this first opening does not become the mouth, it sometimes doesn't become the anus either, that this will then fade and a second opening then becomes uh, the anus. So just to, to be um, absolutely uh, uh, clear, um, uh, there's variation in the groups which we call the uh, deuterostomes. The anus does develop from the blastopore in hemichordates and 
uh, echinoderms, um, but then in uh, the chordates, uh, a cloaca will form then as a, another opening uh, after that. So it isn't a perfect, um, uh, it isn't a perfect uh, a trait. So we shouldn't emphasize it uh, too much. Also, then there's the question of flatworms, um, because flatworms have a single opening. So the mouth and pharynx are here, uh, like we would see in a jellyfish. Uh, so there's one single opening. Food comes in this opening. Um, it's digested. Nutrients are distributed through the highly branched intestine. And then waste can be eliminated from this opening. So this one opening is serving as both the mouth and the anus. Now, the problem uh, then is earlier biologists classified this as a primitive animal, more primitive than those which have a complete digestive tract. Here it's incomplete because there's only one opening, whereas a complete digestive tract would have two separate openings, one for say the mouth and one for say the anus. It used to be thought that uh, flatworms were intermediate between the, say, jellyfish, which have one single opening, uh, and that the early worms had one single opening centrally located like uh, jellyfish, um, and from that, more complex worms uh, evolved. There are now uh, two different models where, on anatomical reasons, you might want to classify this as an intermediate between, say, a cnidarian and, say, more complex worms, but uh, genetics suggests that flatworms may um, not uh, then be primitive animals. They may be nested within uh, these uh, uh, groups. So there are these two different models for how um, uh, the invertebrates should be classified. And this uh, centrally located mouth, that actually might be a, a modification that flatworms developed. Uh, later, since so many of them are parasitic, it might even be, you know, a, an adaptation for a parasitic life uh, style. So flatworms do have an incomplete digestive tract, um, but the earlier model of this being intermediate, say, between jellyfish and more complex worms, um, there are two uh, models with uh, contrary support. Genetics uh, underlies uh, or undermines the idea that uh, flatworms are um, intermediate between you know, the simplest animals and more complex ones.